All right, very good. Okay, so we have with us the godfather of Flat Earth, dare I say, Mark Sargent. Uh, a lot of us have had kind of our first touches with Flat Earth, including you, Jessica. Yes. Through Mark My Sargent. dad was listening to Flat Earth Clues, which led us to our wonderful Flat Earth beliefs. <laughs> yeah, pretty amazing. <laughs> So um, a lot of people know who Mark is and know about his uh, flat earth clues and, and all that stuff. And uh, But we kind of wanted to get kind of a little bit more personal with Mark today. Mark, are you okay if we go a little bit more personal with these questions? You can ask any personal questions you want. I am an open book. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. We were, we were driving, I think, and I was like, what about this about Mark and this about Mark? And you're like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I was like, we need to get answers to these questions. No, no. You can ask, you can ask anything you want. I, I absolutely do not shy away from personal questions. I, I Okay, so anything. we're going to steer we're gonna steer away from how high is the firmament to okay. some other questions then. Hey, before hey, you, you know, start, though, I wanted, I wanted to mention I was on the phone with a mechanic last week and okay. in town here – there is a mechanic shop called Ken Sargent and I was on the phone with him and I'm like, yeah, you know, like Mark Sargent. And the person on the end was like, what? And I said, where, where is Mark Sargent? Like, how do I get there? Where's the address? They're like, and then I'm like, wait a minute. I mean, Ken Sargent, not Mark Sargent. <laughs> It was so embarrassing, but here we well, are. No, that's funny because the K in my name does stand for Ken. My father's name is Ken Sargent. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, so uh, first question, where did you grow up? I grew up, um, okay, I was born in Seattle, Washington, and I grew up on a little island, which was in the documentary called Whidbey, W-H-I-D-B-E-Y, until I was old enough to go to university. And Wow. Yeah, true, true Did story. you have to have like a boat? Yep, yep, you had to take a, a ferry boat on the south end, so we called it going to town. And it was it was very rural on the south end. Oh, there is a bridge on the north end. It's very long, but you know, it's, so it's like fifty miles long. There's a navy base on the north end, and so we took a boat to wherever we went. Uh, and if you didn't catch, you know, if you didn't get home by a certain time, if you didn't if you didn't catch the last boat to the island, which I think was around midnight or sometimes a little bit later, you had to stay there until morning. And so, wow, yeah. did you ever miss it? I only missed it once, but that was the big <laughs> challenge for kids. So if you went into like a rock concert or tried to do some away from your parents, if you didn't make that boat, you had to make a decision, which was, okay, do we just sleep here and then catch the first boat and try to sneak in before our parents get up? Or do you drive around <laughs> the two hours to uh, drive around the bridge? And so, yeah, it was a real challenge. It was like an enforced curfew. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was. They, parents didn't have to do anything. It's like, well, if they don't make it, they're going to miss that last boat. And, you know. <laughs> And then get. That's eaten. awesome. Did you have like a? Was it um, foresty? Did you have like a big yard? Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was. Well, you know, it's the Northwest, so and you know, it's right on the border of Canada, and uh, yeah, we uh, a lot of trees. Uh, you know, so but when I growing up on the island, we, we lived on a place called Hilltop Terrace, and there was a lot of there was a clearing, a big clearing, so I didn't have to live in a real wooded area, and then. That was until I got to junior high, and then I lived in a beach. But it was the Northwest mm -hmm. Beach, and uh, but so yeah, I spent the the rest of those years up on up on a on a beach, and then um, after I graduated, I went to Washington State University for a year and drank through my first year and threw that year away. And then <laughs> you wouldn't went... have you wouldn't have learned anything there. Anyway. No, I wouldn't have. <laughs> yeah. I really wouldn't have. And then I went to um, Western Washington University until my junior year, and that's a whole other story for another time, but I got thrown out my junior year for manufacturing explosives on campus. I was pretty good oh at campus. Oh my yeah, goodness. Pr pretty what, good at cities, what cities are all of these schools in? Oh, okay. So Washington State is in a little place called Pullman, Washington, which is right on the border of, between Washington and Idaho. And okay. then Bellingham is right on the border between um, the United States and Canada. So you it, grew up in my stomping grounds. Yeah. I mean, we used to go to Bellingham for like cheese and yeah. from Vancouver. <laughs> yeah, I was I was in Bellingham for three years. It was a lot of a lot of fun. And then I uh, went to I, I got a job. I won a video game tournament and I got a job playing video games for a living in Boulder, Colorado. Goodness. Yeah, that's so that's so unbelievable. I know it is. It is unbelievable. It's absolutely true. I got hired on the spot, and uh, after I won this tournament, and went out there, and never been to Colorado in my life, and 
and they said, you know what, you're hired. Come on out and move your move your stuff. And and so I moved out there, and I was there for 20 years. From, 20 years. What do you think of Col Colorado? I like it. I like it a lot. It's really nice. I mean, but it was basically trading water for sunshine because there's no water out there. So I mean, it's a high it's a high desert. So I oh. uh, so but it was 300 sunny days a year compared to. Uh, 220 overcast. Washington, yeah. yeah. It's, but I was born in Washington, so I didn't mind. But you know, out there, it's like, what's this fiery bow in the sky? I had no idea. Uh, but Did I, you play video games for 20 years? No, 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 no. I only played uh, video <laughs> games for the first three, and then wow, I, it hooked you, Colorado. Yeah, well, it wasn't just that. I mean, yeah, Colorado is really nice. I, I'm not going to complain. But there was a the Boulder, Colorado, was a great place for tech startup companies, and so I went to. Um, uh, I taught proprietary software for different companies in the area for 20 years and traveled around the country and, and had a lot of fun doing that. And then when I started Flat Earth, uh, I came back to the Northwest, and which was not that long ago. And then, I'm sorry, one little slight detour. Uh, I met a Flat Earth woman up in Victoria. And I, um, she came down to a meetup, one of the, like the second. Those Canadians will do that, you know. Exactly. I don't know what it is about Canadian girls. And she, <laughs> she, took, she took a seaplane down to a meetup. You know, the only, the second Flat Earth meetup ever uh, it was in oh, Seattle. Nice. And she goes, hey, why don't you come up and live with me up in, in Victoria and um, hang out and make videos. And it's like, <laughs> sold. And I went up there and spent a year up there. And, but she was way too young for me. I, I, I mean, she was way too young for me. Uh, like, no, how many years older than you, me, Matt? Ten years <laughs> older? Well, no, no, no. I was, well, I'm, okay, you guys know how old I am, but just, she was 29. So it's like... Wowzers. Uh, yeah, it was like, uh, I just can't. I mean, there was way too much of a difference. I don't want to get into it, though. Anyway, so so we, we parted ways, and uh, so now I'm, I'm on the island until, you know, whatever project, wherever the world takes me next. There awesome, awesome. So you... you Tell us about what your parents did as you were growing up. Yeah, like living on an island. What kind of jobs what would our were jobs there? do? Well, my my dad was a town blacksmith, and he pulled teeth on the weekends. Um, <laughs> my, my mom uh, raised cows and sheep. No, no, my mom was a, a speech and hearing therapist, and then she um, went into full time teaching and was a um, home ec teacher and a librarian of all things. And uh -huh. so I grew up in a teacher's lounge basically and awesome. yeah that was that was, was this really... on the island or did you have yeah to yeah that was on the off? island and my dad worked off island uh yes. my my dad was a corporate headhunter so he would go down to seattle and, and there would be companies that would hire him to recruit vice presidents usually execs some some high level execs from other companies and he would get paid commission on that and that's what he did quite a bit he was also he also did labor disputes every once in a while between um uh, the general work in unions and management, which was also interesting, but yeah, that's what he did. Sounds like a smart guy. Hmm. He was pretty. He was pretty smart. Uh, he was very good at, at personal relations. I will say this: the, 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 Are your parents? Were, did they stay married? No, no, they did not. Uh, yeah, in fact, it was it was kind of scheduled actually. Uh, once they oh knew it was, wasn't going to go well, they uh, they because I was the firstborn, they waited until my first day of university. And, oh, wow. But I knew about it way ahead of time. You know, I, I kind of filled it. It wasn't like a big, you know, I was Shock. blindsided or anything. And so I was told formally when I was uh, being driven out to Washington State, which may have may have helped the drinking process, but not really. I mean, honestly, I was so young when I went out there. Uh, I was already young. I, I had graduated early, so uh, I couldn't even I couldn't even drink on my own out there, even though the drinking age was eighteen. So yeah, I had to people, but and and I joined a fraternity for the first semester. Wow, would just talk about bad. Is that an American word, or do I just not know what that means? What fraternity? It's yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's part of the Greek system. So, like fraternities and sororities, they would be like um, exclusive. Sure, it'd be like a club of boys, oh. sorority, a club of girls. Yeah, okay. like like if you ever saw the movie Revenge of the Nerds, that whole movie was centered around the Greek system, and okay. uh, so Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, blah blah blah, and and so yeah. Anyway, learning every learn things every day. Um, I guess that brings us to the question: Did you have siblings? I did. I did. Uh, I have one sister and uh, she is 11. What's your age gap? Uh, 11 months. 
So not very, oh my goodness. not very long at all. And uh, that that was about it. Uh, her name's Minda, a really nice girl, and she absolutely hates flat Earth. <laughs> okay, and does she live in Seattle area still? She never left the island. So wow. she, yeah, she got married um, here and worked at it a an inn called the Boatyard Inn uh, down in Langley, and that's what she's been doing. Ever okay. Since. Yeah. Does she? Do you have nieces and nephews? No, that's another really? weird thing. No, I don't. Uh, there are no nieces and nephews on either side. Um, uh, my my sister never had kids, and my cousins never had kids, all for wow. different reasons. So it's really weird. So yeah, and you a... you don't have kids? That was another. No, question. no. Um, is that? Uh, no, no. I never. I, for whatever reason, I never got married or had kids uh it, for me it was it was the life i've never felt like i was entirely in control of my life like people would just be especially when it came to to women it would it kind of felt like a like a country square dance where a woman, <laughs> seriously a woman would come to my life it's like do si do turn her around and i'd turn around and she'd be gone and uh <laughs> it was it was just surprising you know all in different circumstances but it you know and but i'm i consider myself a fairly stable guy and like I, I try to say, look, I, look, I would have worked for every company that I went into till I died, and I would have dated any woman until I died. And just for whatever reason, the the God did not want that to happen. God was like, nope, every company you've ever worked for is now gone. I mean, not just not that I left the company; they're gone. They're not even there anymore. Which is wow. so strange. And same thing with women. Um, and I don't want to get into it. I know we don't have time. But but it was that way. It just, for whatever reason, they were pulled out of my life. Um, that I, I could make funny jokes. Say, you know, I don't want it to. It sounds get like we could do, we could do a whole other show. You that. could. It was really Mark yeah. And... I don't I don't want to get into all the murders, but I was acquitted of oh, pretty much all goodness. of them. So anyway. But your current relationship status is. I am single, very single. Are you single in searching or just single? I, I are you kidding me? I'm a really passionate guy. <laughs> You're talking to a guy. I mean, I, I have written poetry. I have written songs. <laughs> uh, I, I am a huge romantic. And I should go on a hunt for these songs. <laughs> uh, well, well, no, no, you're not going to find any of those. Uh, they're, they're special, special songs just for these people. But uh, it's it's strange because yeah I know I'm I'm very single very, and very much looking but I can at this point you guys know I mean I can only date somebody in in the flat Earth community because the paradigm is so different. Um, but right. but that so, being that being said I have met a lot of great people since I've been doing this for the last four years. In fact, my social life in the last four years was better than the previous ten. That's so, amazing, hey. Yeah, no, yeah. That's such works. a true statement. It's um like the people involved in the movement, as you know. When you get together with someone in in the flat Earth movement, your your level of a relationship automatically starts at a higher place than right. than with anyone else. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Well, you mentioned God messing up your uh, your line dancing uh, yeah. stuff, but did you grow up with faith or religion in your life? Yeah, very very much so. Uh, being on a rural island, uh, religion plays a, a big part of it. And so I grew up with, uh, and I don't know if you know that much about. Well, okay, I'll give you an example. Like it was, religion was um, never just a, a Sunday thing. You know, we had youth group, we had vacation Bible school, uh, whatever summer camp. Heck, I went to Camp Malibu. I don't know if you know the the big Christian camp up in um, in British Columbia. I uh, don't. I'm oh, sorry. you gotta look that up, Camp Malibu. Oh, it's a it's a very cool uh, club or a camp just for Christian kids. And you go up there, and the supervision is extreme, and uh, but you have a lot of fun. And so, anyway, point was, uh, yeah, growing up, I very, very strong Christian, and then, but because I grew up in a rural environment, once I got out, it's like, wait, there, there's other religions, there's, <laughs> there's other things. And I had no idea. I was one of the most naive, dumb, blonde kids you ever met, and uh, didn't, you know, I didn't even think that people lied in positions of power. And so when I got uh, to university, I just, you know, went, went nuts and fell away. And then I got into tech, which is even worse because then you go down the science path and, and religion really, really takes a back seat. And then once I got into flat earth, all that changed. Uh, I became spiritual again, almost overnight. 
Uh, but I was much more open to things. I wasn't going to condemn, you know, beforehand. It was like, well, if you're Jewish, you're going to hell. It's like, really? Why? They seem to be on the same thing. So, but now I'm way more... What churches were you going to? <laughs> well, uh, you know, depending on what evangelical sect you're in, you know, and also it comes down to parenting and, you know, it's like, what about this? What are, your, are your parents... Would they consider themselves still Christian and your sister? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my, my mom, definitely. You know, she prays every morning. And uh, my dad, not so much. He'd be like, how many days until church? Six, right on. Uh, <laughs> and then my sister, not so much. Not so much. Even though she played piano in church quite often, uh, she really wasn't that religious. Huh. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, moving along, I have here, do you have any like kind of weird hobbies that we don't know about or passions aside from video gaming? <sighs> aside from video gaming. Yeah, that's right. Cause video gaming is, you know, I'm a lifer when it comes to that, just because I was good at it. Do you still play? Oh yeah, sure. Sure. I still play. I mean, I have a, I have a Warcraft account that's 14 years old now. Um, which I haven't had to pay for for a long time because I'm very, very good at it. I'm good at games. And so when you're good at something, you're never going to completely drop it. Um, I loved basketball growing up. Uh, was, wasn't was half bad at it. Well, uh, you're tall. Yeah, exactly. You recruited and I, I was fairly big. And so I played power forward and, you know, and I was... Uh, and the, the league we were in, it was single A. So, you know, there's single A, double A, and triple A. I don't know what it is up in Canada. But uh, I, we did well. We went... Um, I helped lead our team to our first district title and our first state appearances ever in, in the history of the school. And we went back to back, placed both years. And uh, heck, I even got a, um, in the last tournament, I got a double double, which was not, not shabby for uh, a dorky white guy. Yeah, I think I saw that on Sports Center. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I was, look, I, I, I did as well as I could. I, but all, really, honestly, when it comes to high school sports like that, it all comes down to the fundamentals and coaching. Uh, and of course, it also helps if you have, if you don't have a, like a superstar on your team, it comes down to fundamentals. And he drilled, he was extremely disciplined. And so, um, other than basketball, yeah. I liked windsurfing. Uh, windsurfing? Yeah. That's an interesting sport. It, it is. I got into windsurfing when windsurfing was new and the boards were big and heavy. And The uh, water is so cold on the coast there, though. Did you wear, like, you know, a wetsuit? Yes. I Well, sometimes. I would wear a wetsuit top when it was cold. I would rarely wear the wetsuit bottom. Um, I got used to it. You know, the, the northwest water isn't so bad in Seattle. It's not like when you're going up to Vancouver where, where it's pretty damn oh, chilly. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not that bad. Um, but it also, you, you know, it also it's motivation not to fall. So, you know, you just, as long as you don't fall in, you're fine. It's like, no, I don't want to get in that water. It's free. It's freezing. Um, and other than that, uh, movies. I'm a huge movie. I love media. I Even love... as a woke, as a woke man, you can watch movies. Yeah, I can. I can. Because for me, it's not about the special effects or where it is. It's about the plot. I am a huge believer when it comes to writing. Uh, which is why I'm I'm not shabby at writing. I love I love um, good plot lines, motivational plot lines, and I hate plot holes. In fact, I, I, I <laughs> seriously if there's if if I see too many plot holes in a show in like the first hour, it's like nope, because it's all about suspension of disbelief. You know the reason why we cry at movies and the reason why we yell and scream at movies and get emotional at movies is because we want we're in it, we're invested in it, we want to believe it. And if they, they put too many things that it's like, nope, not believable, nope, not believable, it's fine, it, it, then it eventually just ruins it. And I've got a high standard for that. So, yeah, i got quite a few. Without, without going into too much detail, can you list three, like, all-time movies off the top of your head? <sighs> okay, no great detail. Um, favorite science fiction movie would be Predator, the original with Arnold Schwarzenegger, Carl Weathers, Jesse Body Ventura. Uh, favorite acting movie, movie they think had was objectively acted. I don't care about the writing as much. Uh, would be Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, and nice. the best cinematography ever would be the one that everybody votes as the best cinematography ever, which would be Citizen Kane, uh, starring Orson Welles, going all the way back, way way back to, to the freaking forties. Your second one just made me want to say, put the coffee down. <laughs> Well, I've never heard of any one of those movies. Oh, but, my uh, God. Well, that's because you're, like, 19. So I thought you were going to say when you were talking about 
Cinematography. 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 Camera. I thought you were going to say Lord of the Rings. <laughs> no, no, Lord, no. Look, Lord of the Rings was was the finest trilogy ever, and I was I was glad that I I got to watch it in its heyday. Uh, you know when it you know it really hit, and I I saw that in the theater multiple times. Is it my favorite movie of all time? No, it's a great trilogy though. But again, you okay. said just three off the top of my head. I've got categories. Fair enough. I got categories <laughs> for just about everything. So that's awesome. Yeah. All right, moving on. Yep. Yeah, moving on. You, you, oh, you take I'll, it. I'll take you this take one. it. I'm okay, bullying great. you. I'm so something that a lot of flat earthers experience is some drop off when they start telling people about it. How how was your friends and family circle affected when you started speaking about flat Earth? It was layered, uh, for lack of a better term. Meaning, because I was kind of in it, you know, pretty early on in, in 2015, nobody took it that seriously. And so I remember um, telling my, my mother, I was calling her from Colorado, and I said, hey, I want to let you know about something I'm doing, uh, but I don't know exactly how to broach this to you. Because I'm, basically I started getting interviews, and I figured, well, eventually, sooner or later, she's going to run into something on the internet that has my name <laughs> on it. And I said, just to let you know what I'm doing, and you know, that's the line from the documentary. It's like, what are you into now? <laughs> and uh, and it was true. I, you know, and so, but it was really split down the middle. So um, some people in my family like it and some hate it. Mom likes it. My sister hates it. Uh, but more than that, I've got people that are into it that won't even come out of the closet, which goes along with, you know, there's the, at least 90% of our community is still in the closet. Like I have two cousins sure. that, that are totally into it, but they're not going to come out to their friends, family and coworkers, you know, for various reasons. So it, it wasn't for me, though, I didn't get as much hell as other people did because of my eccentric upbringing. You know what I mean? Uh, and maybe your approach, you probably had a good approach. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah, yeah. I can I can so I can softball it in to people enough to where again, because of the training I had when I was doing uh, customer support high level um, tech stuff out in Colorado when I was doing for the, for the software, I dealt with really, really high stress clients. And so I knew I had a really good sense of how to feel people out and where their energy mm -hmm. was. And so if I felt, you know, any sort of pushback, I could, I could, I was fairly flexible when it came to that. Uh, but no, no, other than that, the, again, the family is like, what are you into now? I mean, by that time I'd already, um, did the fireworks thing and did the video gaming thing and uh, <laughs> you know, all, all these little little things along the way and so where it's like Precursors. oh but it still was a stretch even for me it was a stretch I mean come on it's now it's gotten to a whole new level did you find though if did you have any I don't know like best friends before flat earth and did you find that once you found out about flat earth did you grow distant from those friends did you did you no, kind no, of that's break a, that's, away? that's a good question because I was in a weird again. If you believe in everything for a reason and that God had a purpose for this, um, I was really just trying to stay out of the world's way for the better part of oh, at least five years. And by that, I mean I was you know just kind of doing my own thing. You know, I, I wasn't really dating. I was I did I didn't my friends were yeah, I had a close circle of friends, but it was very very small. And I was really you know I had no internet signature or footprint at all, and so I was just doing my own thing. So when this thing came along, I didn't have a lot of pushback because there weren't a lot of people to push back. And so it was okay, like the, the, it was the perfect storm for me because there's nobody saying no. I was, it's, it was almost like I was talking to myself sometimes, which was it's like, what do you think, Mark? Yeah, I think you should absolutely go for it. Right on. I knew you'd agree. And that's how it went. Sounds like you have some awesome friends. Uh, they, should, they, were very, they were very supportive. They knew, they knew me well enough to where it's like, well, if he's into it, let's, you know, why condemn it? You know, why, why not? I, the people have always respected my, my passion for things. And so yeah. I, I, and I appreciate that, appreciate them for not condemning me. Sure. So where did you first hear about Flat Earth? Uh, just, a it was just a random YouTube video thing. Cause I, again, because I was doing my own thing for about five years, I was absorbing huge amounts of media, not just movies and television, but a lot of YouTube. And then I saw it on, you know, it was recommended to me and I just ignored it. Nope. Nope. Not going to look at it. Not going to look at it. And then there was that one video. I think it was in the documentary. 
a German guy who was talking about flight routes in the Southern Hemisphere. Mm. And I thought, eh, whatever, I'll click on it. And when I did, I, I tell people, it's like I got flushed. I, I, it was a visceral response to where I was wondering, it's like, wait, I've clicked on a lot of weird stuff on the internet and it's never embarrassed me before. <laughs> 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 stuff way worse than this. What is What year was that? That was uh, 2014. 2014. And, uh, and then again, I sat down and said, okay, I'll, I'll destroy it I'll, in three days, easily. Nine months later, I'm banging my <laughs> head on the keyboard going, there's no way, there's no way. I said, fine. I, I, it was kind of like the um, the Ferris Bueller line where he's, he's, his friend's picking him up. And it's like, okay, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. And that's really what it did. It felt it's like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll make a video. I'll, I'll go the other way, which was what He'll it keep was. calling me. He'll, he'll keep, keep calling. calling. He'll be calling. Seriously, that's what it was. Flatters were just nagging me to where I just said, okay. Were uh, you? Go ahead. Sorry, were you watching other conspiracies on YouTube that brought a flat earth one into your... Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what did it? The reason why I had the connection was I was, at least in the, oh boy, 2010, 2012, I was into Hollow Earth. I thought Hollow Earth was kind of a fun wow. thing. To where I'd even made a, a pilgrimage to Mount Shasta, because if you know anything about Hollow Earth, that's like one of the entrances to the underground tunnels. I went, I drug a girlfriend along and she humored me. And uh, and I was into it. I was going, yeah, Hollow Earth, that could be a cool thing. And I was I was really hooked on the possibility of that. And then I turned around. And when you're researching Hollow Earth, eventually you will run into Admiral Byrd. And that's when I was looking at it. And I was going, oh yeah, Admiral Byrd, Hollow Earth. And then I realized he was he spent almost no time on Hollow Earth and all his time down in freaking Antarctica. And that's what kind of mm. led me down to Antarctica. And that's when I started connecting the dots. It's like, no way. Nobody, because nobody was talking about that. Nobody talked about Admiral Byrd in Antarctica. They always talked about Hollow Earth and Admiral Byrd. I, I, I don't take credit for much, but I'm going to take credit for putting that big, giant connect the dot there. And it's like, look, cool. look down in Antarctica. It's important. Did you kind of leave the hollow earth idea or do you marry flat earth with the hollow earth um i didn't leave it entirely no it's that's a good way of putting it um being marrying the two because yeah that was exactly it because i realized that when if you were going to build a civilization or if you want to build a place to put a civilization in, you don't need a giant hollow earth you just need a little bit of room. Uh, and I, I can't stress this enough. You know, the, most of our civilization, 90% of our civilization lives just between um, zero and 5,000 feet, not even a mile. You know, everyone, wow. most of the population lives next to a body of water. And if you, if you put an underground, if you decide to build a cave that was 10 miles high, that's easy. I mean, our, our passenger jets barely fly 10 miles high. And so you could, in fact, the, which leads into it, who's to say we're not in a hollow earth scenario now? Who's to say we're not in some sort of giant cave? I don't think we're in a giant cave, but we could ab you could absolutely put our civilization in a giant cave if you wanted to. Hmm. Yeah. It's a cool way, cool way of looking at it. Yeah, yeah it's really cool. I still think it's God's footstool, but, you know, I'm not going to shoot down the possibility. It's like, why wouldn't we be? So anyway, yeah, hollow earth still very, very viable. Yeah, interesting. So, um, you know, being one of the forefront guys for Flat Earth, <clears throat> I know that you get a, a lot of people calling you a shill, CIA agent, all that stuff. What's your take on that? What, what's your response to people How like that? How dare you? How <laughs> dare you bring that up? No, 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 no. Are you kidding? I've gotten the, the shill thing, and I will... Uh, I will give credit to Eric DeBay for that one. He was the one that started it way back in the day, and then Matt, Matt Boylan helped. Which was, you know, they both said, fall in line with what we're doing or, or we'll discredit you. And it's like, again, you wouldn't dare. And, and they did. They absolutely did. And, you know, rumors and grapevine help a great deal. But uh, look, I'm as, uh, seriously about as open a book as you, you can ever want to come up with. I mean, you could look up the records on, on uh, heck, that double double I was talking about. That You can find that on the Internet. That's like part of like <laughs> the state things. Like, oh, yeah, Mark, Mark Sargent had a double double. Um, part of the part of the manuscript evidence that I was talking about at, at question everything. Yeah, <laughs> I th when it comes. Have you come face to face with people like in settings where they've 
think you are no, a no, 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 no. And in fact, you know, it's funny. Yeah, it's funny you'd mention that because most of the time, and it's part of being a troll. One of the rules of being a troll is that you're anonymous. That's just the way it works. And so because you're afraid, uh, you know, trolls are cowards. And so even though the comment section of YouTube is just littered with all sorts of fun comments and great fun stories, very, very few. I mean, maybe 1% of my emails are troll emails, maybe. And even less than that are phone calls. So if I'm such a huge shill, why isn't anyone contacting me directly? And no one in person has ever challenged me. Uh, if someone, Isn't that funny, if, hey? They'll judge you from behind the computer screen, but once they meet you... <laughs> yeah, that's that's mob mentality, though. I mean, that's been going on for hundreds of years. And that is, you know, yeah. ye seriously, <laughs> yelling yelling from the crowd. You know, it's like, you yeah. know, hang him, lynch him. It's like, who said that? <laughs> Nobody comes forward. I mean, we've seen that in movies. It's not just movies and television. That happens in real life. And I, I don't mind. Like, look, I, peer pressure has never really done anything for me. I've never knuckled under. I, I had friends over the years. I had a good friend of mine from um, high school, um, Mike Bunker. He was a, like a trailblazer. And he didn't even have to tell me. He was like, he just tr blazed trails. And, and it's like, you know what? If it's cool enough, people will follow you. It's like, right on, man. And then, you know, we ended up parting ways eventually. But uh, yeah, peer pressure, pff, who cares? It's an awesome character trait. Mm. Yeah. So uh, one of the reasons I think you're catching heat now is because of the uh, Beyond the Curve. Um, oh, be, beyond be the curve, I, I, by the, the way, Behind the Curve. Actually, Beyond the Curve is a better, a better title. But they use. That's why I want to say it because I do feel like that's a better title. It is a better title. They, I think they probably went either one. And Behind the Curve, you know, it works. But uh, yeah, Behind the Curve. I, I, okay, so here's the deal Behind the Curve. It just so people know because you know yeah it's it's exploded in the last week of course uh, for a completely different reason but I was helping promote this thing in the film festivals last April I mean technically I watched this thing almost a year ago eleven months ago it's been a while it's right? been a while we did twenty two film festivals and I didn't go to all of them obviously and like seven countries and it did extremely well considering the topic and then it was released on iTunes and Google Play and Amazon and um, YouTube, and right, it, you, you know, were, got a little you were traction. promoting it because you were in it, right? Not because you made it. People, so, oh yeah, that's understand. that's the other rumor. It was just like that I that I directed. It's like, do you guys not watch the credits? In fact, it's in the beginning of the movie. You know, directed, produced. Uh, I'm not even I'm not even listed as an because it's a documentary. Technically, I'm not even listed as an actor because I'm not. And so, but yeah, people still think I directed. No, it was a team out of Los Angeles, uh, Delta V Productions, very small outfit. Um, proud of them that they actually, considering the shoestring budget they were on, I mean, they were living in Airbnbs, bad Airbnbs, you know, <laughs> making this thing, you know, maxing out credit cards. They had to bring in a couple um, extra producers to finish the thing off, and they got it done. Uh, what changed, though, in the last couple of weeks was I had I severely underestimated the market share of Netflix is that Netflix is freaking huge. Netflix is everywhere. And because it's free, the big diff, all the big difference is uh, it's free. You know, you Netflix, it's, you know, everything you buy Netflix and you get everything on Netflix. You don't have to pay extra. Whereas the others you had to pay. And so all of a sudden, uh, beyond the, behind the curve, um, became free for everybody that had Netflix. And so everybody watched it recently. I mean, he, and Jaron said it best. I mean, he had high school friends that he hadn't talked to in years <laughs> that were calling him up in the last week and the same I had a cousin send me a quick video of you because she had seen pictures of Matt with you yeah she couldn't believe that we were friends but um yeah do you not think that any exposure to flat earth is good exposure I do sort of well, a... okay the the old saying is it, again I know so much about media the old saying is actually different than the most people know it as all publicity is good publicity what that isn't really the saying the saying is even bad publicity is free. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that's what the saying is supposed to be. And in this case, yes. Okay, and here's why. Here, here's why it's important. And, and I saw, and look, I, I can tell you from firsthand experience, because I went to the premiere in Toronto, and I did other film festivals around the country. I saw this thing and what it did to people. And, that, and I predicted this. It was, you know, I'm a pretty good judge of, again, of plot lines and, and how things get viewed. And so I said, look, the flat earthers are not going to like it, but it is going to be a massive Trojan horse to the globalists. And by that, mm -hmm. I, what happened was we saw it in, in audiences that were 99 to 95% globalists, right? 
And when we saw it, the, after like the first 20, 25 minutes, people, you could hear them laughing in the background because they honestly did not think it was real. They thought it was either a piece of docufiction or a mockumentary or something along those lines. And about the 30 minute mark, it just snapped. And it was like, and you could see them li like whispering to each other going, wait a minute, something's going on here. Because they, they, they realized there was something huge on the internet that they had missed. And mm -hmm. then the, you know, by the time they get to the 100 mi minute mark, they, Jaren's experiment, who cares? At that point, they had, they, they had been flat smacked for an hour and a half. <laughs> and, they were, and they were seriously, they were realizing, wait, this is like a, like a real thing. Something really huge has been like traveling through the internet and they had no idea it was even out there. And so they go and look it up. And yeah, and it's like immediately they go at home and, and start looking it up. And the Q and A sessions that I was there for, I mean, there was one session in, in Little Rock, Arkansas, where nobody left. It's like they knew they said, oh, yeah, Mark Sargent is going to be on stage after this. And like they just waited for me. <laughs> I sat down. It's like anyone have questions like hands everywhere. And That's awesome. and it's always the same thing. They had so many questions. They had to kick us out of that theater and, you know, and then kick us out of the lobby because they just wouldn't shut up. Everybody's got like anything, you know, once you once it's in your head, there's lots and lots of questions. So the movie did does an amazing job at, at planting the seed. Is it a perfect movie? No, but it is very disarming, meaning it's not a flat earth propaganda film, even though everyone would love it to be so. The fact that there is an astronaut and some scientists and a psychiatrist in there makes the globalist people that are sitting in the audience feel safe. It's like it's like flat earth, flat earth. I'm, nah, okay, there's an astronaut on screen. Okay, I'm safe. Nah. I'm okay. Uh, flat earth, flat earth. Oh, psych psychiatrist, thank God. Please tell me I'm okay. <laughs> and by the time the end, it's that back and forth. You, you all know the saying, and that is, how do you break a nail? Uh, you wiggle it back and forth. That's that's how you break a nail, and that's what this movie does. So I was happy that's to be a part awesome of it. Recap. I, I am I am sorry that Jared and Bob had to deal with what they had to deal with, but let me let me add one more thing, and that is the director. By the time he got done making this film, hated Flat Earth. The people were fine. By the time he got to the but Raleigh, though, North Carolina, he freaking hated us. Or not, not, not even us, just the topic. And that's why he mm -hmm. took the tweak against us. That's why he bent it in a certain direction. Anyway. Nice. Yeah. Nice. All right. So in two minutes, let us know where you'll be in 10 years. 10 years. Uh, I hope that I am in a brand new world. I don't even think that far ahead, to be honest, because if you would have asked me five years ago, I'd be doing conferences and doing public speaking events and making 1500 videos on flat earth. I would have said you were crazy and you need more medication. So okay. I guess I make the question, um, where do you see the flat earth movement going? Where do you see yourself? In like, one oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I think flat earth is just on the cusp of, of greatness at this point. We're everywhere every year. I think it's not going to get that much bigger. And every year I'm surprised, uh, between the conferences this year and the public speaking things and cross my fingers, the television show, uh, because it, it, we deserve it at this point. Uh, I yeah. think it's going to be huge. I think it is the new paradigm. I think it has the potential of uniting people. It sounds like a kumbaya thing, maybe a potential new golden age. Uh, at the same time, the powers that be might turn it in a horrible direction, but I'm I'm glass, glass half full, so I'm rooting for the, the happy ending. That is such a wonderful way to end this uh, recording. Oh, cool. But I am going to end it with a question from Summer. She's bonus such a, question. Bonus question, and she's a huge fan of you. Yes. Um, she said, if you became a millionaire, would you come visit us in Alberta? Oh, I don't, I don't need to be a, a millionaire. <laughs> uh, even though the Toronto <laughs> conference is not going to happen, there's some women in um, Alberta that are actually thinking right. of, of doing a mini conference in Alberta. And they That's already, right, in Calgary. Yeah, they, they already invited me. So yeah. I, I said, yeah. absolutely, I would do it because Let's I do. wouldn't miss seeing you guys. And yeah. uh, you can tell Summer I would be happy to, to meet her and go out for pizza or whatever. And uh, gotcha. yeah, absolutely, I'll, I'll come visit. Awesome. Well, we really appreciate you coming on, Mark. Uh, had a great time visiting with you. Um, any of our fans want to check you out, why don't you tell them where they can find you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, all you have to do, the best place to find me is just go on YouTube, type in either Flat Earth Clues or Mark Sargent, my name, S-A-R-G-E-N-T. And that's really it. Or if you want to watch the documentary, it's everywhere. Just look for Behind the Curve and you'll find it. And love it or hate it, you'll learn something.
Mm. Awesome. Well, we want to thank Mark Sargent for coming on and thank you guys for listening and we will talk to you guys next time. Thanks, Mark. Thank you.